Hi everyone. This is a GMAT problem solving practice question. It's a medium difficulty question. This question is on the topic speed, distance and time, focusing on the concept of a train crossing an object. Let's read the question and then look at what concepts we'll be learning or we need to know to solve this question and solve the question. Finally, I've tweaked the question a little bit and I've left you with a bonus question at the end of this video. Try and solve the bonus question and post your answers in the comment section of this video. Before we proceed further, have you subscribed to our channel? If you have, thank you so much. If you have not, please consider subscribing to our channel right now. And if you like this video, like the video and share it with your friends. Let's get started. A train traveling at 72 kilometers per hour crosses, the speed of the train is 72 kilometers per hour, crosses a platform in 30 seconds and a man standing on the platform in 18 seconds. What is the length of the platform in meters? Quickly notice that there is a mix of units here. The speed of the train is given in kilometers per hour. What we need to compute, which is the length of the platform, they've asked it in terms of number of meters. And the time taken is given in terms of seconds. As a good habit to not make any mistake, in rates topic, in speed distance time topic, please make sure that by the side of the number, you write the unit. So if there's a mismatch of unit, as it happens in this question, it's going to stare at us and that's going to be the elephant in the room for us to basically spot. So we'll not make a mistake and convert the units, make it congruent, uniform units, and then solve it. So the good habit, let's always write units in speed, distance, and time. This entire topic to a large extent runs on this single relationship between speed, distance, and time. That is essentially distance is equal to the product of speed and time. Right. So this is a concept on which most questions in this topic will basically be solved. Let's get started. We've been given the speed of the train. They've given us two scenarios. One scenario when the train is crossing a platform. I'll do a schematic to do what happens when it's crossing a platform. And we'll also look at a schematic what happens when it's crossing a man. We'll start with the second one, which is when it's crossing a man. This is a train, right? the engine of the train. So this is a man who's standing here. Right. The train completely crosses the man. This is the point, I'll call it as point one, when the train's engine is just about crossing the man. See, this is the man, the engine is just about crossing the man. This is when the last of the carriages has crossed it, right? This is the scenario what we have. So this is when it is completely crossed. What is the distance traveled by the train when it is crossing a stationary object, right? The man is not moving, man is stationary. And the second parameter to consider is that the length of the man is insignificant when it is compared to the length of the train, right? Essentially, the length of the train is going to run into hundreds of meters. Man is probably going to be a fraction of a meter wide. So essentially, the length of the man is insignificant compared to the length of the train, and the man is stationary. In such scenarios, this is what is going to happen. The man stands here, the engine is just about to cross, this is the last of the carriages which has crossed it. The distance traveled by the train, measured from where the engine was when it was about to cross the man, to where the engine is when it has completely crossed the man. This is the distance traveled by the train, which is length of the train plus the, what, the width of the man, right? But we said that it's insignificant compared to the length of the train. So we'll take that to be a zero. So the distance traveled by the train when crossing a stationary object whose length is insignificant compared to the length of the train will not be nothing but the length of the train. Distance in this scenario is equal to length of the train. What distance? The distance traveled by the train when crossing that object. Next scenario is when it's crossing a platform. Let's draw this as a platform. This is the train which is about to enter the platform, scenario one. When the last of the carriages has left the platform, this is scenario two. Let's find out the distance traveled by the train, where the engine was when it was about to enter the platform, to where the engine is when the train has completely crossed the platform. Here, this is the length of the train plus the length of the platform. So when a train is crossing, again a stationary object, in this scenario, the length of the object is comparable to the length of the train, then the distance traveled by the train is equal to length of the platform plus length of the train. What distance? The distance traveled by the train when crossing this object is length of the platform plus length of the train. So this is the basis to solve this question. What have they told us? To cross this, it's taking 18 seconds. To cross this, it's taking 30 seconds. When it is crossing the man, the length covered, the distance covered is nothing but the length of the train. 
when it is crossing the platform, the distance travelled is length of the platform plus length of the train. So it's doing an additional distance of the length of the platform when it is crossing the platform. So it would, it's traveling more distance. So obviously it has to take more time. So it has taken additional time. Instead of 18 seconds in the first scenario, it's taking 30 seconds in the second scenario. So it's taken an additional extra time taken, extra time taken is equal to 30 minus 18, which is 12 seconds. Extra distance traveled by the train is equal to the length of the platform. What do we know? Distance is equal to the product of speed into time. The distance is the extra distance it is traveling right now, which is the length of the platform. We'll add it, use the extra time that it takes to travel the platform, which is 12. This is going to be in seconds. We want this answer in meters. And what is the speed of the train? That is equal to 72 kilometers per hour. Obviously, when we write the units by the side of the number, it's very evident that we have a mismatch of units. So before we proceed, about solving this part, we'll quickly recap whatever we have learned. Here is the concepts that we have. The first one, when a train crosses a man standing on a platform, the distance covered by the train is equal to the length of the train. When it is crossing the platform itself, the distance traveled by the train is equal to the length of the train plus the length of the platform. It could be a platform, it could be a playground, it could be, uh, let's say, another stationary train, it could be a compound wall, any place where the length of the second object is comparable to the length of the train. That is the case where it's the distance covered is the sum of the two things, the length of the train plus the length of the object whose length is comparable to the length of the train. Right? So we got this clarity. The last thing, the extra time the train takes in crossing the platform is basically because it's doing additional distance. So extra distance traveled is the length of the object. Extra time taken is typically given the question as it happened in this case. So length of the platform for us therefore will be equal to the speed of the train 72 kilometers per hour into the additional time taken which is 12 seconds. We want the answer in meters so let's convert the 72 kilometers per hour into meters per second. 72 kilometer converted to meters is 1000 meters. One hour is equal to 3600 seconds. So converted kilometer per hour to meters per second by multiplying that value by 1000 by 3600. If you can remember this, for example, this is 5 times 200, 18 times 200. You can, if, you, if you're comfortable remembering it, you can say, hey, one kilometer per hour is always equal to five upon 18 meters per second, right? If you can remember this, you can just plug it in and get the answer in probably five, seven seconds quicker than what it would take you to s derive this in the examination. If you think remembering this is a lot, you can derive it. It's not going to take too much time, right? So this is 72 into 5 upon 18, now the answer is in meters per second, speed is in meters per second, into 12 seconds. So seconds and seconds will cancel to leave us with an answer which is going to be in meters. Right? 18 cancels with 72, leave us with a 4. 4 times 5 is a 20, 20 times 12 is equal to 240. 240 meters is the length of the platform. Right. So what are the answer options we have? We have 240 which is answer option A itself which is the length of the platform. As I mentioned, just tweak the question a little bit and I'm going to give that to you as a bonus question. Most things remain the same. Train traveling at 72 km per hour, crosses a platform in 30 seconds, man standing on the platform in 18 seconds. The only thing is, what you need to find out is not the length of the platform, you need to find out the length of the train. I've even left the answer options intact. Right? Solve this question and post your answers to the comment section of this video. I'll let you know whether your answers are right. Best wishes for your GMAT preparation.